Every donation matters. We really appreciate absolutely everything you do out there. We also had a $5 donation come in from Ace Burrito that says my favorite onomatopoeia is also lemons. Thank you very much for that. So that's that. I guess it's got to be my new favorite onomatopoeia as well. Lemons, because it sounds like you say it. We have a $25 donation with a comment from Anarch B. And they say, hey, remember that you're cute. Remember to drink some water, eat something if you're hungry, and take any meds that you need to. Also, this may seem trite because I don't really know you, but I'm proud of you. The world has teeth. It can be cruel, but you're here and you're you, and that's worth celebrating. Less than three. Anarch B, thank you so much for that wonderful message. Something we all need to hear and remember that we are here and we are worthy. And we've got a donation for $50 from he who am are is myself. They say, thanks to this donation, we are very, very close to the cultic incentive, if not met outright. I'm doing my part. Yes, you are doing your part. And they are speaking specifically about the cultic Void Flush Showcase, which is only $70 from being met. So if you have that donation that you're getting ready to put in, make sure you put it towards that donation so we can finish that one out and move on to the next one. Speaking of moving on to the next one, I've got word that we are ready for the Cyberhook Run from Squealo. Take it away. All right. Thank you. Hello, GDQ. Uh, my name is Squeal. I will be running Cyberhook. With me, I have Fell and Cyan. Hello, I am Cyan. Hello, hello. And I am Fell. All right. So, Cyberhook is a very uh, fast paced movement game. We're just going to get right into the run. There are 82 levels that we're going to be doing for Full Game Marathon. So, we're ready to go on the three, two, one, go. Cyberhook. Yeah. So, okay, uh, if you guys want to just explain the movement kit and stuff as we're going, because there's a lot happening all at once, and... Yeah, yeah, a lot of these levels are going to fly by pretty quick, especially the early levels, but uh, as you might suspect, this game is all about conserving momentum, uh, getting speed as quickly as possible, and it turns out the, the fastest ways to do that are uh, running on surfaces on the ground, um, wall running on surfaces, so you'll see um, a lot of times where Squeal will just touch a surface to wall run a little bit um, for a little bit of extra speed. Um, and then, of course, using your grappling hook and pulling yourself in. Um, so you want to be doing one of those things uh, as often as possible uh, to keep building up and maintaining the speed. Yeah, absolutely. This is like a big emphasis on uh, staying grounded when you can, because that builds up speed a lot faster than using your hook, uh, or just like avoiding, you know, any long periods of time where you're not doing anything. You're just floating in midair. Sometimes that's necessary. As you know, a lot of skips in this game, you're traveling pretty far in the air. But the more you can reduce times like that, the more you'll be able to conserve speed for longer. Yeah, and you'll see in that uh, that level that we just did there, and in uh, several of these other ones, uh, there's a lot of different colors of blocks um, that you can interact with in different ways. Um, but you also have a gun, uh, and the green blocks will sometimes block things that you would like to hook onto. Um, and so you'll see Squeal blast in a little bit to get rid of those. Um, but in general, the uh, most of the blue surfaces are going to be things that are grappleable um, and interactable in different ways. We have uh, like transparent blue surfaces uh, that you can grapple onto and also pass through. Um, there's red surfaces, which everybody knows red, red bad. Um, that's, that kills you. And as you start over the level again, um, you got the the yellow surfaces, which you can touch and run on, uh, but you can't grapple to. All right. So one of the main uh, ways to kind of build up speed very quickly, and you just saw it there, is doing very short like wall runs right at the start of levels. It's very, very important to just do a short little wall run at the start whenever you can. Uh, getting a little bit of extra speed at the start is kind of exponential in time save. 
Um, and at some levels like this one, we're just going to stay grounded most of the time. Um, another important thing is as soon as I jump, I'm going to typically grapple again to get to the ground right away. That way I can just keep running as much as possible because oddly enough in a grapple game, the fastest way to really gain speed is running on the ground. I can make that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you'll see uh, a couple more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Bell. I was going to say, uh, you also can see that uh, as Squirrel fell off there, uh, he attempted to... Uh, I don't know if what the official name for it is. There's some kind of snap that you can do, uh, which slows down time and extends the length of your hook, uh, which can definitely... It can help you like save a situation like that where Squirrel has fallen a little lower than where he wanted to. And it can also uh, be used to reach... Uh, surfaces earlier that you normally would be able to, which is like really crucial for building speed earlier. Um, so there are like a lot of different applications yeah. of like speed, speedy applications of uh, a tech that otherwise slows down time, which is pretty interesting. Sometimes you gotta go slow, go a little bit, a little bit further. Yeah. And uh, in this level here, you'll see we're gonna ignore the uh, vast majority of the level structure here um, and instead opt to fling ourselves from the beginning uh, and gain enough speed to just fly straight to the exit. There are various flings throughout the run and pretty much all of them are extremely difficult to do. It requires uh, mastery of tension and like conservation of momentum in ways that are just really, really shockingly unintuitive. Um, yes. and, and sometimes very, very difficult, like this right now. Yes, and sometimes a lot of uh, mouse gymnastics while you're spinning around an object multiple times trying to remain looking at it. <laughs> yeah. And also, um, speaking of like tension on the hook, when Squeal is spinning around that cube, he's constantly like holding the direction uh, away from where his hook is latched onto the block. So there's constantly like more tension being built, and that results in him gaining more speed every time he swings around the block. Lots of little tricks like that to just gain just enough speed uh, off of some of these flings to make it where we want to go. Yeah, and some of them do do cut it pretty close. So you'd like to also minimize the time that you spend, you know, spinning around the object as well. So closer you can get. And uh, oh, another thing that we forgot to mention too: um, there is two jumps. You have a double jump that you can use in midair um, that you will see used occasionally uh, to get a little bit of extra height. Um, in general, you really only want to use it if you need to use it to reach something, because it will, um, if you notice, whenever he puts up his, the character puts up his left fist there for the double jump, uh, you'll lose a little bit of speed. Um, so it's not, not always ideal, but sometimes very necessary. Yeah, and another, another fling okay. here. Yeah, skip almost all that level and just go up to the end. With, uh, some hearts. Physical. Yeah, there there are two ways to like. There's a, like a second like uh, I guess way to jump in midair without losing a lot of speed, um, as well, which you'll be seeing a lot. Uh, where you can actually like break your grappling hook tether uh, like with a jump, um, and when you do that, you don't gain a lot of height and you kind of keep a lot of forward momentum. Like, Sometimes that can just be like just enough difference to make a uh, really good position and is a lot faster of an option. But unfortunately, you need to be currently tethered to something to do one of those. So it's definitely not as common that you'll you'll see that come in handy. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, there's just like a set of interesting tech to this game and just like learning to master it and know when one will be faster than another. So it really fun and interesting part of like learning how to route the levels in this game. Yeah, I'm just with the sheer amount of levels nice. in the game too. How how wildly the strategy on one level can vary from from another. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah. You'll also see uh there's a lot of these like big boosters, like tubes that oh and then, Oh yeah, I think uh I don't remember did you explain purples? I did not. I missed I missed the purple blocks. Those ones will kill you if you hit them, but you can also grapple to them. Um, yes. So 
Gotta be careful, but also they're very helpful. You can touch, but only from a distance. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these big speed tubes uh, give us a lot of vertical momentum in a lot of places. That one horizontal. Uh, but a lot of times you're going to want to end up canceling the momentum that you get out of those pretty quickly by grappling onto something lower than you, so you're not just like waiting to float down. Unfortunately, at the end of this level, there's no real good way to do that. You're just going to have to fly all the way to the goal. And that's another thing. The goal post is uh, grappleable, and so a lot of times you can yes. save fractions of a second at the end of a level by just uh, you know grappling out of the goal and pulling yourself in with a little extra momentum. Squeeze out those precious milliseconds. <laughs> yeah. It was a very in-depth uh, IL scene, yes. uh, as you can probably tell by the like level-based gameplay. Uh, so there actually hasn't <laughs> there hasn't been a lot of like full run strategy developed for this game. A lot of like the full game runs for this game are just people nailing as many of the fast IL strats in a row as they possibly can, which mm -hmm. is very cool and very fun and very risky. <laughs> Extremely, yeah. There is a lot of uh, a lot of difficult things. It's a very easy game to play uh, at the same level a thousand times on when yeah. when runs go so quick. Another really cool fling here. Just Hit the ends. double jumps there. Yeah. yeah. And thankfully, you could hook onto the post there. I have flying here. This one's a bit, a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, there are often times flings that you can do on like a lot of these levels, but a lot of them are precise to a degree that it is just absolutely not worth. Yeah, they also doing. aren't the most fun to do on every level. Um, so like, there's some yeah. that are definitely optimal that I could do, but I've just kind of chosen not to because it's more fun to see the actual level. Yeah, this game does have really good level design, although the, we are avoiding a lot of it in this run. This is an extremely satisfying game to play through casually, I think. Yeah, and it's the whole like freedom to play the levels how you want. I mean, it's kind of yeah. reminiscent of like Super Monkey Ball, it just in the way that like you just have a lot of ways to gain momentum and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, absolutely. I like. Really fun. I see some people mentioning uh, VR for this, which I uh, oh god have thought about, <laughs> and I think would be absolutely nauseating to play. Um, oh, nice but I do not believe this game has any any built-in VR support. We'll see if somebody uh, is willing to go where nobody's gone before and try. <laughs> playing this game in VR, see what happens. A little science experiment. You also saw in that level, uh, you, well, you might not have seen it because it's really tiny. Uh, there are these like diamonds. Oh, this is actually a really cool strat. I'll just let, I'll just let this play out. One's a, really a little, little tough. The right setup falling down here. And flying all the way up to this platform, skipping everything over there. Looks good. Yep. Also, that like, Beautiful. Gr like grazes the kill plane at the bottom of the level there. Yeah. <laughs> like it is <laughs> so tight. You're close. That is a really oh, hard. That strike. was a PB. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, and funny thing about the uh, the way that we're doing the full game marathon run here, at least uh, it, a PB is time loss RTA <laughs> because of the screen that <laughs> that shows your leaderboard position changing. more to build into the like IL like the why the IL culture is so developed for this game. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the leaderboards are so in depth. There's like a global and a regional leaderboard and there's like replays that you can see mm -hmm. for every run on the board. Yeah. So you can look at top runs and see how they do what they do. And uh 
it's very very accessible for like learning strategies to be able to compete with. Yeah, you be able to reference just the top times at any time. See what it's very very transparent leaderboards, I would say. Yeah. Funny thing about this level is uh, one of the first levels in the game had Squeal going down on a bunch of three, three corridors very similar to this. Uh, this level is literally just that level, but turned upside down. <laughs> this level is very, very rough to maintain speed on. It's very awkward, yeah. Yet no ground. Yeah, and this level is unique because it has a cannon that shoots you out at like one of the top speeds that you can hit. And no other cannon sends you remotely that quickly, it's just that one. And you actually need to find that hidden cannon uh, in order to get like a, one of the achievements for the game that has you hit a certain speed. And so it's very, it's, it's very interesting, but it's very fast, so you gotta yeah. use it for the speed run. Bit of a backup. Get those. Nice. Those arms moving. Running along the ground. Right. Now we have moving blocks, which just uh -huh. lets us propel our speed even more. Uh, we also have enemies, which are definitely a thing in this game. Um, you just shoot them, they shoot back at you, but they're not the hardest to deal with. Yeah, they're surprisingly efficient at killing you, like, even though you're going pretty fast, but uh, once you know where they are, they're not that bad. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice pretty quickly uh, with this level and then more levels to come, uh, this game starts to get a little more open and a little more precise, or a little less open and a little more precise with this level design. Uh, there are, of course, like still easy levels, but a lot of the later game levels in this become like actually very difficult to complete. Um, and you will definitely probably see a few more deaths uh, in density towards the end of the run, just because the levels get a lot more difficult. And, you know, schools come for all the really fast strats, so they get even more precise than they normally would be. Yeah, like at this point, we just don't have a floor um, at all, so already ramping up some difficulty. We'll start on that one there. Just wall run, uh, basically straight up the wall. You can wall run at about any angle that you want, so it's a very quick way to start this level and avoid having to uh, kind of just run through a bunch of surfaces that you can't grapple onto. Into the field of cubes. Yes, and this is a very. I very much enjoyed this level the first time that I played it, and still do. So many options. Yeah. Just throw the grapple, and it'll probably hit something. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine. Nice. Okay. It's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can just notice that like a lot of the routing through these levels is like with the in, with the idea to just barely skim across a lot of these walls and just pick up some speed. And this level is all about running. Is this on? Is this called on the run? Is that what it's called? Uh, it's called ride, I believe. Ride. Okay. Yeah, I knew that. Ride. The ground. Yep. Ground ride. <laughs> Yeah, now we're gonna see we're gonna see a lot of levels that are starting to get more interior mazes, kind of that you'll have to navigate. Um, a lot more kill surfaces to deal with. Yeah, a lot, a lot. There becomes less blue, like solid blue, in a lot of the later levels, and more like purples and see-through blues as well. Yeah. Yeah, the game just continues to throw random new mechanics at you in a very fun way, like these windmills. Yeah. You go pretty fast. Oh, <laughs> <that was really laughs> close. Oh my god. 
grazed it there. Uh, this is oh, a pretty man. long level of this running, so if you've got a donation or two, that would be a good time. Yeah, for sure. We've got $20 from Mr. Zbub with no comment, but thank you so much for the donation. And we have $25 from Zero Now, who says, Great stream. Love watching every year from the UK. Well, thank you and hello to the UK. And I've got $10 from Adam, who says, Love, love, love GDQ. Thank you for being a great cause over and over again. Thank you so much for those generous donations. We really appreciate them. Nice, yeah, thank you. Keep them coming, we are... Oh, it's a really Making long level. Okay, yeah, for sure. I've yeah. got uh, $20 from Corodias. We have no comment, but thank you so much for that. And I've got $250 from Avaridia, who says, I never get to catch GDQ Live, so watching tonight is a real pleasure, given how much time I've spent watching VODs on YouTube. Thank you to everyone who donates their time to this phenomenal world-changing event. Thank you so much for that donation. Really appreciate it. And glad to get to catch it live. That's awesome, right? It's such a fun vibe to be here. GDQ is always so festive. It's like Christmas for speedrunners. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in some of these levels, you'll see the, uh, that also, I don't know if we mentioned that uh, grappling onto a surface will reset your double jump. Um, and so in some of these levels, that is necessary for staying off of the ground, especially if the ground is somewhere where the game would not like you to land. And so you'll see a lot of, uh, I guess, kind of hovering with the grapple, which looks a little bit weird. Um, grappling onto a surface and then immediately jumping out of the grapple um, just to maintain a bit of height while you're moving forward. Yeah, this, this level, is Purple Veins, is one of the more yes. fun ones in the game to optimize. It, the whole level is purple, there's like no safe ground at all, and you just have to I don't know, use, use, use all the veins to travel a very long distance. It's one of yeah. the like, larger levels in the game, so you can get a lot of speed to preserve through the whole thing. Oh, and speaking of red... <laughs> yeah, we're at mostly red levels now. I heard you liked red, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I we didn't hear you like red. Yeah, it's a, a lot easier to deal with horizontal momentum in this game than vertical momentum. So levels like this can be like really tough puzzles to figure out. Um, how to like maintain speed like throughout the vertical climbs of them. And it's just really, really like impressive when it's done right. And then here's hover. This is probably the coolest yes. level in the game. Speaking of hovering. This is probably, yeah. in my opinion, the hardest level in the game to do like the full aisle strat for, but we're gonna try it for a bit. Oh, that oh, out there. Oh, uh, I missed that grapple. Okay, back oh. up. Ah. Oh no, Whoa. we can do it again, <laughs> yay! Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a target outside of this structure that you can just barely like clip through the window as you're swinging around this in this circle with the slow mo, and that oh. unlocks the goal, which is at the start of the level. And so then you travel all the way back, and you can go through. Right. And it is really nice. cool and really fun. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, it's it's extremely difficult and precise to do. And that was that was almost like really really clean. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a, a problem that you can get with the uh, the sort of semi-transparent blue blocks that you will... Uh, you're grappling into them and pass through them. Your grapple will shorten. It's constantly pulling you in, uh, but uh, it won't, won't stop, and you'll just get a nice abrupt stop there. Yeah, look how I just play the opposite direction. Uh oh, have we? I we might have we, we might lost have, uh, Squill. He might. He might. He might be coming back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh -huh. I think we're, yes. we're back. We're back. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>all right well we had just a little bit of a glitch there we were just flying too fast through that synth wave uh landscape so while we get things set back up here i'm going to read a couple of donations that have been coming in uh we had a 50 dollars donation here from laxon that says thank you so much for arranging this event it's the most wholesome part of my year i totally agree i look forward to these so much all year long and we have a hundred dollars from zero who says Yay for games for a good cause. I mean, that's really the summary here, right? Where we're applauding games for a good cause. That's exactly what we want. We've got $20 from Sev. They say thank you to all the runners, commentators, organizers, and everyone behind the scenes for this awesome event. Thank you, Sev, for that awesome donation of $20. Speaking of $20... We do still have that Cultic Void Flush showcase that is only $20 away. Whoever can get that closed out for me, you're going you're gonna to make my heart swell 500 times larger tonight. Oh, and we, got, we are ready to kick it back over to Squeal, and we're going to finish out this run. Take it away. Sorry about that. I think my internet died for a second, but we should be back. Oh, no, All I according to plan. Yeah. <laughs> it just means you get to see this level again. Get, getting the schedule back on track. That's one way People to put are it. going yep. too fast today. That is, <laughs> that is a problem. Too many gamers. We went too fast and broke the internet. It happens. It does. Another really yeah. large, long level. Yeah. And it's it's so funny, I don't know, I just, like, perspective-wise, that, like, a really long level is, like, a 28 seconds. That's, like, absurdly long for this game. <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't really know. Do you know what the longest, longest uh, level in it's this game got, is? It's got to be big bank. It's yeah, big bank. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. big bank. I don't it's know like, what the time ends up being, but... It's like 35 seconds, I want to say. Okay. At, at yeah. least for so that's me. that's a, a long level, 35 seconds. And the shortest one is like... Three? Three? Yeah, yeah, about... There's a lot, also of, like it's a lot of three, four seconds one. levels. <laughs> oh. You, you, think, you think you're burning is the hardest one? Or the, the shortest uh, one, though? I mean, it's... Yeah, also this level. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole level over there uh, where we can just wall right up with enough height to shoot the little trigger from afar. Yeah, there's a, a very tiny, distant target that you probably did not see that Squeal was able to very precisely snipe, which spawns the end of the level you can just finish. Here we yeah, have, also uh, the bullets a lot of enemies. <laughs> they do, yeah. So you can pre-fire obstacles out of your way and enemies off of walls. Oh yeah, and you can just totally pass through a lot of the obstacles on this level because they're not actually there, they're just see-through. You don't have to play the level by going over. Very fun to find, like rats like that. Yeah, you get a little bit of extra speed from the... Grabbing the right side of the spin, well, the left side of the, the correct left side of the spinning blocks. Correct left side. <laughs> Pretty good. 
a cheeky wall right there. You squeeze right through those blue walls. Lines up perfectly. <clears throat> yeah, we're getting getting down to it. The yeah, run, this goes, just... run always goes by so quickly. Yeah. Oh, nice snipe though. You would have been <laughs> flying if you didn't get that right then. Yeah, focus is a, a godsend for just doing like last second saves. Uh, yes. Especially like the the little bit of extra distance casually did not feel like much, but once you start doing runs, it can save you in so many places. Just being able to reach a little yeah. bit farther. It's a piece of tech that gets more useful the better you get, the more comfortable you get with the controls. Not gonna take this extremely fast because this level is hard. Yep, and you did the hardest <laughs> part really quickly already. That was good. Yeah, as, as we were saying, a lot more red. <laughs> yeah. I'd say overall this game has a pretty pretty smooth oh. difficulty curve, though. There's a few few curve balls that are thrown in the mix. Levels I remember being stuck on for a while, but for the most Is part, this... does a really good job of easing you into the madness. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, if, does this version of the game have the original Master Airbender level? Uh, yep. Oh boy, why am I didn't get to see that. Why am I struggling on this so much? It's not like a hard level. No, that's how they get you. Nice. My speed. That's fine. Got through it eventually. I guess to, to preface what I was just saying, there was a very infamous like level, like on the game first came out. Uh, it's called Master Airbender, um, and it was like in the fourth world and by far the hardest level in the entire game. And then they eventually removed it and replaced it with another level. Uh, and then I want to say remove that level and replace it with the original level, but moved it to the last world. Yep. <laughs> and so that, that's where we'll find it. Shuffled around a little bit. I am not doing that stuff. You can, like, try and, <laughs> you can. You can try and pre fire that block down and shoot the whole thing, but it's dumb. Uh, now the levels level are here. very tight. Yeah, uh, this is this is very, very tight. This is probably the tightest level, but it's also very short, so it doesn't quite take like the most difficult. Yeah, but yeah that was extremely clean. Well done. That level is so hard. <laughs> It is, and that's an example of where the uh, where like losing speed from the double jump can actually be beneficial. You can use it to kill your speed so that you don't go careening into a purple wall or ceiling. Yeah. Or you could be squeal and just fly through it. True. Yeah, and this is one of the shortest levels in the game. Oop, in the goal. Right, here is Master Airbender. Yep. Hopefully I don't yeah, think it's like, too bad, but it's a lot of <laughs> going up and down and up and down and left and right, sharp yeah. directional changes, being able to change your velocity very quickly. Here yeah. I just kill my speed because I don't know how you're supposed to do this part. At... Oh, high speed. Oh, so close, yeah. I think uh, the, the world record for this when I started playing this game, I don't know if the recording is still there because the leaderboard has gotten wiped since then, but it was easily the most like impressive like speed run I have ever seen. Just, like being able to fly through all this without killing your momentum is yeah. really cool to watch. It's like really, really cool. And obviously like unbelievably precise. Really, nice. really difficult level. Well done. This is my take for hardest level in the game now, but of course, easy for Squeal IO. That's true. Making it look too easy. That's true. Yeah, don't be deceived. This is a hard game. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's got a nice not nice difficulty curve, but it still still gets very difficult for sure. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna do a fling right. on this level. One saves too much time to not take. So that's not good. I went way too high. <laughs> this is a fun fling, fling though. This is probably one of the right. best levels to to learn how to do flings on. I think this was the the first one that I spent some time practicing on since you have that nice isolated platform right at the beginning not a lot of obstacles you have to worry about swinging around kind of get acclimated to how your momentum carries around in a circle and you're further incentivized to do it because the level is very awkward to play there was yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a lot more fun to play with the fling for sure yeah, that little ring around the rosy there is also extremely precise, so nice job on nailing that. Really hard. So we're like already at the end of the run. Uh, not this level, but the next one, when I beat that one, will be time. Uh, can I loop through? Yeah. Well, yeah. This is the... This is the trailer level. Oh, the one that's how... Oh, and we get to <laughs> <laughs> to build up a bunch of speed and then fling back down into a tunnel and it's really awesome and fun. Nice. Oh, that's okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> and then the last one, yeah, time when he passes through the goal. And time. Nice. Yeah. Well done. That was uh. Yeah, that flew by really quickly. That was that felt fairly clean. Uh, I did get yeah. stuck yeah. At a couple points, but overall, very well done. Yeah, definitely very few deaths. It was awesome. Yeah, and if you're if you're interested in this game, uh, check it out. It's on Steam. Um, it was also part of the Prime games a little while back, so maybe you happen to claim it if you check your Amazon library and see. Uh, you know, speaking of Prime too, you know. Uh, yeah, really fun game. Any, anything yeah, else? Um, if you have any questions about this game, you should definitely ask Squeal. He's very good, uh, very good reference, and willing to help out for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Uh, yeah, we, check it out. We Play need, need more runners of this game. It is very, very fun. Uh, very fluid movement and a good casual game as well. This game has a story, by the way. We don't, we don't <laughs> really see yeah. it, but it does have a story. <laughs> we were talking before this run about if we could mention anything about the story, and we don't remember. This, none of us remember the story at all. <laughs> Too but, fast. Uh, it, definitely, it definitely has a story. <laughs> That's for sure. Story of speed. Yeah, it is a speedy yeah. one. I believe that is all from us. Uh, thank you for watching Cyberhook, and have a good rest of your GDQ. Yeah. Thank you so much to Squeal for that amazing lightning fast cyberhook run. That was so much fun to watch. Thank you so much again for that. We still have so many donations here. I love reading them for you. We've got this one from Timeless Chronicler who says, gotta get a donation in on day one, sorta. Super excited for the whole event. They donated $15. It is technically still day one. You've got another like six, seven hours, something like that to get in that first 24 hours. So if that's a goal of yours, get your donation in here in the next little window. Uh, we are going to take a little break. We will be right back. So stick around for more awesome games done quick.
Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online in support of Prevent Cancer Foundation. I am the Kyle Thomas. I've got some awesome donations here to read for you, including this one. I love this one. $5 from Anonymous saying, Donating to see Snake climb the ladder. What a thrill. If you, It took me a second to figure out what was going on when this started this morning, but all of the new stuff the tech team has put in where when you donate, you see Snake climb up the ladder or you see uh, the Monkey Island off in the distance or the NBA Jam battles that have been happening. It, the, the tech team never ceases to amaze. And I've got $25 here from Millie Pug. They say, another amazing event so far and looking forward to more. These events are the highlight of my year, and as a Final Fantasy XIV player, I am especially excited for the Palace of the Dead run. But before that, let's see those Kiwami bosses. Thank you so much for the $25. And yeah, we, are, we have a few challenges open right now, including that Yakuza Kiwami Super Boss Showcase, which is at $9,700 or so. So when you're getting your donations in, make sure you're putting them towards some of these incentives so we get as much GDQ as possible. That is going to do it for me, for my shift with you. I will be back tomorrow hosting more. I am going to leave you in the capable, wonderful, inimitable hands of Bobby Blackwolf. But first, we're going to take you over to Spike Vegeta, interviewing D.E. Cosmic about his upcoming Gungrave run. We'll see you soon. And welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 Online. I'm Spike Vegeta. Hope you all have been enjoying this amazing night shift of awesome speedruns here at Awesome Games Done Quick. And now going into the morning portion, we've got a couple of awesome run and gun style games here, joined by DE Cosmic, who after this will be showcasing their skills in Gungrave. How you doing, my man? Doing all right, Spike. How are you doing, man? Dude, I'm great. I'm we're up early. We got <laughs> coffee and we are ready for some high octane action. You know, so usually uh whenever I'm doing an interview with someone, I'll go do a little bit of research, but all right, let's not make up everything about the interview. And going to watch this one, I watched the entire run through. Not a super long watch. It is so satisfying to watch. There's so much optimization in the combat, in the movement to go with that, and how they kind of go hand in hand the whole time. So I want to ask you for such a super satisfying looking run what is your favorite little detail about what you get to do in this run uh i honestly really like a lot of the movement because there's a lot of like little like neat movement tricks in order to help grave traverse through a lot of levels and navigate some of the like more complex fights there's a couple of like really cool jump tricks in the run there's um ways like there's alternate paths through different levels that you can use and um mm -hmm. there's also like ways to like reduce lag during the run that also helps with movement. That's really cool. Yeah, I was wondering, I remember, this wasn't one of the questions I was initially going to ask you, but one thing I noticed was there's a lot of lag in this game. It's kind of back in that era. If you were N64, PS1, PS2, there's probably some lag reduction strats. Have a ton of lag reduction strats been found over the years for this game? Uh, I don't really know like a ton of the history about it, but like as far as I can tell, there's a ton that we do like, you know, in the, the course of the run because like as far, like there's even in the first room of the game, if you tilt the camera like a certain way, then there's like, what, there's only one guy on the screen and the game just lags and it's like, <laughs> all right, I guess, <laughs> sure, you know, all right. So it's like, all right, I got to turn this camera real quick so it doesn't, it doesn't do that. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of that stuff. I don't know how quickly a lot of it was found or sure. like, how, you know, and, and how like big of chunks it was. But yeah, there's, there's definitely like a lot of times where it's like, well, if I, if I don't do this correctly here, then I'm, I'm definitely hurting for certain. <laughs> it's pretty intense looking. I was like, there's because there's sometimes you're like, you're reducing lag, and there are other times where if I don't do this, the game is going to crash. Like, <laughs> that's the level of lag this game will run into sometimes. But again, there's a lot of cool stuff going on on screen. It's a super, super flashy run. So, kind of talking about that, a little bit of lag reduction here and there. We also talked about the movement. What kind of is the optimization and the difficulty to running this game for you? What? Uh, I would definitely say it's really all of the little things uh, in the game, especially the movement. Um, there's even like little things with the combat where um, you have to really just 
navigate through certain areas and understand exactly which enemies to kill in which order and it like you have to like snap around to different enemies and use certain abilities at like all the time like to pick up the game and run it is is pretty straightforward it's a very like uh i guess intuitive game but a lot of like the finer details like there's times where like moving like the wrong way through a hallway can lose you a couple of seconds here and there yeah. and it's just like it all just stacks up over time I always love runs like that that are kind of a low barrier of entry, but like the more you dig into it, you're like, oh, oh, there's, I I'm losing yeah. so much time that I'm not noticing all over the place. So fun to optimize. So going through your resume on speedrun.com, like I was, <laughs> when I first watched this run, I was like, oh, Godgrave, this gives me like <laughs> Devil May Cry vibes. And then I go to look yeah. at the runner, D.E. Cosmic. Oh, you are also a very prominent Devil May Cry speedrunner. So obviously, a lot of similarities here the running gun, the action nature, are what would you say kind of draws you to speedruns? Games played in your childhood, similar styles, what do you think? Uh, mostly it's just like I just kind of search up action games. And like I started with DMC because that was, you know, games from my childhood. Um, Resident Evil 5 was another one, Vanquish, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And um, as I sort of like started to dig deeper into like the hobby, I was like, all right, well, let's try and go for the more obscure stuff now. Let's kind of figure out and work our way backwards, like in terms of what did I miss when I was a, a you know, a kid that I would have definitely eaten up when I was like 15 years old. Uh, and Gungrave was on that list for a long time. So like, you know, I bought it and then I played through it and I was like, this game is sick. This game is excellent. And I just was like, <laughs> I just immediately want to run it. There's, there's something about that very just like in your face sort of like action game that's just like very arcadey in, in that sense as well. Yeah. Just um, really no frills and it really, it really just knows exactly what it wants to be and, and who it's appealing to. Uh, and I just, yeah, I just love those types of games, especially combat centric runs. Yeah, 100% agreed with that. And again, this game is very balanced in both the movement and the combat optimization. And there's really no downtime in this run. You're just go, go, go the entire time. Before I let you get out of here, I just want to ask you about any post-GDQ projects. Do you see yourself grinding more here in Gungrave? Do you see <laughs> Gungrave? I said that weird. In Gungrave, <laughs> do you see yourself going back to Devil May Cry or something completely different? Uh, so really, the ba the two biggest things that I want to work on are DMC 4 and 5. I'm not really happy with the times that I have in those games right now. And I also really want to get a better time in Dirge of Cerberus. Uh, so I think that's probably going to be like one of the big things for, for next year is really just getting a, a sick time in Dirge of Cerberus because I know I can do better than that game and it's, it's a really fun run. It's, it's awesome. All super, super sick games and super speed runs on super cool speed runs on top of that. Well, Cosmic, thank you so much for joining me here for this interview. Again, we are going to be kicking you all back up to the front. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go watch D Cosmic's run of Gungrave coming up right now. Enjoy, everyone.
You are watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online, powered by Twitch. My name is Bob. My name is Bobby Blackwolf. How are y'all doing? It's been a while. So, uh, welcome back to AGDQ. It took me a little bit to get here. I was too busy riding the, the desert bus. They were about to tow me back to Tucson. But uh, I am thrilled and excited and honored to be here for the next couple runs. I'm gonna have uh, we're gonna be having Gungrave, any percent by DE Cosmic. You've seen DE Cosmic before, Devil May Cry 5 at AGDQ 2020, Resident Evil 5 at AGDQ 2021, Vanquish at SGDQ 2021. We're uh we're excited to have him back. And you know what? The run, it's ready. So Gungrave, any percent DE Cosmic, show us how it's done. 